So I, what I wanted to I wanted to discuss the following Indian. You know, I, I saw I saw an interesting idea this year um, about Sukkis, about the concept of Sukkis, and you know what what, what the hashkafa of Sukkis that uh, I hadn't really seen before. You know, a certain a certain idea, a certain you know, concept that um, I wanted just to to share with you a couple of points about, and you know maybe still give us time to. Uh, like I said, you know, the last day of Sukkot now, Shana Rab, the last day of this whole process, the whole process of Rosh Hashanah and the Aseris Mechuv and Yom Kippur and Sukkot, and you know, it's all it's all coming down to now. Like I said, Shmini Aseris is its own yantif. It's it's like after everything and after everything, Hashem says, no, I just want one more day with you, right? That's Shmini Aseris. That Kasha Alai Predoschem. It's difficult for me to separate from you. I, I want to have you know a little bit of more time with you, but but now this is still the time, right? This is you know we're still we're still in it. This is still the Shana Rab. This is the end of the time. You know, tomorrow is the, the big day in davening. With you know seven times a kafos around the bima and you know all these things you know it's a uh, it's a, you know it's it's a big time so you know what what is this idea so I saw I saw this uh, most of what I'm saying that was from the from the Ramchal um, that uh, he brought the the following idea it's a fascinating fascinating idea in Parshas Kiseite right which we lay over the summertime um, so there's a mitzvah. That uh, you'll see from this, it's not like one of these things where you see, like, you know, hopefully if we have time just to get hit with a few different points, to see a few different areas of Torah, how it all comes together, you know, different things in a, a very beautiful way. You have a Pasuk like this. This is Perikhaf Bey's Pasuk Ches. Kisiv Nebai is Chadash. There's the beginning of uh, Parshat Kisete. This goes through lots and lots of mitzvahs, all sorts of mitzvahs that it goes through. And uh, uh, Shiloh HaKain is here, and uh, uh, helping, a, helping a person whose uh, donkey is falling down and not wearing men's clothing and women's clothing, and all sorts of halachos, and all the halachos and halachos. So it says, Kisiv Nebai is Chadash. When you go ahead and you build a new home, what's the mitzvah? Anybody know? What's the mitzvah going to be? No, 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 that's that, 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 that. a fence. Excellent, right, right, beautiful. Now see some makel gagecha. Beautiful, excellent. Kisiv nebai is chadash. When you build a new house, there's a mitzvah in the Torah, a mitzvah in the Torah. Make a maka, make a fence. Now see some makel gagecha. Below sasim damim bevesecha. Make sure that you don't spill blood in your home. Keep on ofel mimenu. If a person were to fall off of this, you know, fall off of this roof, right? So this is this mitzvah. Kisiv nebai is chadash. Now see some makel gagecha. When a person builds a new home, they have to build a fence. You know, a fence to protect. Uh, to protect their home. So I want to read you the words here. I'll paraphrase a little bit um, from the Ramchal, how he explains this. Um, you know, I'll be remez, just you know, giving a hint that, that, that what these psukim are, are alluding to. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't want to get off on a tangent because we spent a lot of time on another tangent. But I just want to say, you know, it's an interesting thing. You know, there's a concept in, you know, we're, we're used to this concept in, in literature, uh, the concept of metaphor, right? What's the, what everyone knows what the simile and what's the metaphor? What's the, what's the metaphor? What's the simile? What are they? Like right. So simile, right, is when it's like an ad. Metaphor is when you know, uh, you know, when you the, the thing is the thing. That 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 you know that's metaphor. So it's it's very interesting. I don't want to get into it now. Maybe somebody will remind me to talk about this another time. Not not in uh, class, but you know, some other time on Shabbos or whatever. You know, about about uh, you know psychologically and neurologically what the whole idea behind uh, you know metaphors is. It's very interesting because if you think about it, you know what what what. It, what it, because there's an idea like this. There's, a, there's a, I, don't, I don't want to say it's a dysfunction. Does anybody know what synesthesia is? Synesthesia, did I speak with last year? Synesthesia, anybody knows this? Synesthesia is when a person crosses their senses, when a person can, like, see uh, sounds, right? Ever heard of this well, idea before? A person... Like no, no, not that's a different thing. That's like echolocation. That that's like based on sounds, they can get a picture of what's going on. This is like uh, you know a certain pitch or a certain sound uh, is, uh, appears to this person as a color, uh, or some. There could be certain numbers that appear. You never know, heard about this idea? It's very interesting. Has Your friend has it. It's a very very interesting thing. Okay, I don't want to get into it, uh, anyway, but but the idea is, is that it's like you know a crossing over, like you know n- neurologically. You know, it's not it's not a it's not a psychological it's a disorder. It's a neurological thing. It has to do with a, a brain, you know, structures in the brain that cross over and stuff like this. You know, um, some people end up with this, like after a stroke or something, they can end up mm-hmm. getting this because uh, you know scar tissue can form a connection. No, there's nothing bad about it. Can form a connection between places, and then all of a sudden a person. Will start like seeing colors when they see a certain number. It's very interesting stuff. I, whatever that's what to talk about. Anyway, but but what, what's behind what what the uh, person did a study about this uh, a guy is very, very into this um, is it, um, an Indian neurologist. His, his name is V S Ramachandran. Ramachandran. I don't know if anybody heard of him. He's just folks these things. So he did this whole study and he found that a lot of artists and poets and musicians um, have synesthesia. In other words, a very high correlation 
between people with this uh, thing, well, I don't call it disorder, whatever it is, this, you know, this con condition, um, and people with, of, you know, who, who are in, involved in art and in literature and poetry and these types of things. And he, he posits this very fascinating thing. He says like this, because, you know, what, what makes any good art good, right, is, is the power of the metaphor behind it. Right. Now, what, what's the difference between a good, you know, a good poet and a bad poet? Good literature and you know, it's, it's the power of the metaphors. It's, it's when they, you know, when they speak about something in certain terms that resonates with people. You know, you know, uh, Shakespeare. Why is Shakespeare so universal? You know, because he speak he speaks in, in in metaphors. He speaks in ways that resonate with with all all people. Right. All like well, except for high school people. Right. But <laughs> and, and anyone after high school, you know. Um, <laughs> You know, it, it's uh, that, that's it. Yeah. Everybody hear what I'm saying? I, so I, I want to, I just again, maybe we'll talk about this more on a, a different occasion. But I, I think there's something very, very interesting to this because you know, in, in reality, you know, uh, uh, well, a, met a metaphor is very, it's a very ruchnius thing. It's a very ruchnius concept, right? Because the whole, the whole world is really all metaphors. It's all really all metaphors for what's going on in the ruchnius world. You know, I mean, the whole physical world is just, uh, you know, like Rabbi Fix was said, said, said last night, there's a very beautiful concept uh, of the tail of the sukkah, right? That, you know, you see a shadow, right? And it looks like there's something there. And then you look at it and you see not only is there not something, but it's the absence of something, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's causing it to be there. And, um, you know, the, so, so what's it doing there? What's it there? It's there to teach you something, right? The whole world is here to teach us something, and that means that re really the whole world is metaphors, right? Everything, everything. All, you hear what I'm saying? It's like right? so uh, when you when you see it this way, when you understand this way, you realize that you, know, you can have so many different areas of Torah um, that all seem to have nothing to do with each other, but they're really all saying the same thing, you know, because, but they're just using different metaphors. You know what I'm saying? I, so I, I want to just try to, to pull a concept like this out if we have time. Um, uh, just to try, to try to pull a concept like this out. So, so Ramchal says like this. So what's it talking about? Kisiv nevay is chadash vasis makol gerecha. This is such a beautiful thing. What he says like this. Um, he says, Ikvar yiduon, that we, we know, Sheba Rosh Hashanah, on Rosh Hashanah time, you know, nivnes, the person is built mechadash. Right? A person builds himself up anew. V'lofichach, Rosh Hashanah, therefore, on Rosh Hashanah, kol boi ha'olam ovrim l'fanav kivnei marom ladon b'maaseim v'liros eich tzarech shiye binyane lahani gatachtonim b'chol Hashanah. He said like this, we, you know, it's not, it's not, Rosh Hashanah is not a judgment day that Hashem decides, okay, there's a day a year that I'm just going to take stock and everybody's going to get judged. He said it, it's much deeper than that. It's much more profound. On Rosh Hashanah, a person is built up anew. A person is building themselves up fresh. And because it's time to build fresh, it's time to pass in front of Hashem, and it, that involves judgment, right? Like we spoke about this a little bit in class, right? But, but the idea is, on, on Rosh Hashanah, a person is building themselves afresh, right? Umiyad shenaseh binyanazeh, right? A person goes and constructs their new kisiv nebayis chadash, a person builds themselves up, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, milvad tzarech lasel sasukha. A person that vasisa makil legagecha, make a sukha, make a fence now for your roof, yeah. In order, in order to protect himself for the Madriga that he So what is he saying here? It's such a beautiful thing. I don't know if you got this. It's so beautiful. He's saying like this. Kisiv nebayas chadash. When you go ahead and you build a new house, you build a new bias, you build your new structure, right? You go through Rosh Hashanah, Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Aser Tshuva, Yom Kippur, right? You go through this time and, and hopefully, you know, hopefully we've all gained, we've all grown, we've all tried to pick ourselves up a little bit, we've tried to build ourselves. So what do we do next? Vasisa Makkah Lekagecha. What does Hashem do? He gives us the mitzvah of sukkah, of sukkah. He gives us this, you know, Makkah, right? That's what it is. It's an enclosure. Right to, uh, for this gag, for the roof, for the, this place that we reached. So now we have the mitzvah sukkah to protect us over here, to keep us and protect us, and 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 to you know and to help us keep this madrega. Right? Can you imagine if you went for Hashanah Yom Kippur, just like boom, right back into real life, like just like regular back into everything? You know, I, you know, I, you know, it's hard hard enough as it is, you know, to to keep Yom Kippur going and all these things. You know, but but what a chesed, right? What sukkah, what the sukkah is is that makil gagecha. It's that opportunity that a person has to have this yantif of all this, this time of only simcha. It's all positivity. It's all happiness. It's all upbeat. It's all gishmaka mitzvos. It's you know, it's, it's eating. It's dancing. It's all these things. Right? It's all a time of, of asisa makil gagecha to protect this madrega that we've reached. Right? Protect, protect this. This level that we we've come to, and and that's the idea. Though. Everyone heard, hears this idea. It's very beautiful. No, you hear this? I don't know. It's me. I thought I thought I thought this, this, I thought this idea was very a beautiful idea. But then what, what what's fascinating is that you see this really comes up in a few different places, and a few other places it comes up as well. 
Um, this, this next one I'm pointing out, it comes from not, not, not from the Mchal, though, because he says it also, but uh, from Rosh Hashanah Vali, he, he speaks about this, and he says, you know, you have an interesting thing. You know, he says, you know, this idea, this concept of sukkah coming to protect us, sukkah coming to, you know, envelop us, and to, uh, you know, and to, you know, after Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, right? I'm saying, you know, we've all heard these ideas before, after this in, in, in time of Ruchnias, and this time, and, you know, but what does it have to do with the Ananiya Kavod of Mitzrayim? Right, I'm saying, but all of Sukkot is Eishe Yitzis Mitzrayim. Right, remembering leaving Egypt, and then Hashem housed us either in real Sukkot, right, or in the Anani Akavot, right, the, the clouds that that kept us safe and protected. And, but what does what does that have to do with this concept of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? And I was like, it seems to be two different ideas, right? You know what I'm saying? In other words, like, what what does that have to do with Yitzis Mitzrayim? Ever hear what I'm saying? You know, there's a famous question: Why, you know, if if this is to commemorate Yitzis Mitzrayim, how come we don't do it in Nissan? Right, so the answer is what's the answer? Anybody knows the answer? Yeah, yeah. I, I learned that like why is it that we we built like sukkahs whenever like why why now why why is it that we have to go now? And it's, I heard something about how like most like going in whenever they they build, usually build tents and they're comfortable in the sun. Excellent, the exactly, exactly, we're exactly. Purposely going out in the cold to show that no, we're doing this like this. Exactly right. That's that's what the Gemara says because in Nissan, excellent in Nissan. Uh, when it's that's like the summertime, the springtime, it's when it's starting to get warm. So if you, we go outside and build a sukkah, you know that doesn't look like anything special. That's and everyone, even you know, even non-Jews, everyone goes outside. You know, when it gets nice outside. So so therefore, it's right. It's now. So that that's it's definitely true. I'll be I'll be shot, but it's also kind of like okay, but that's the reason. Uh, really, it should be then, but now to make it now. So what he says it like this. Ravali says like this. An incredible idea. A very powerful idea. And, and this really answers up a lot of questions, because if you think about it, you know, almost every mitzvah that we do, we say Zechel Etzius Mitzrayim, right? All the Yom Tovim, we say Zechel Etzius Mitzrayim. You know, Shabbos, we say Zechel Etzius Mitzrayim. Right? Do you ever think about this? In Shabbos on Kiddush, Friday night, we say in Kiddush, Zechel Etzius Mitzrayim. Right? I don't know, maybe you learned this at Rest Hour, I don't know. But what's the connection? What do you mean Shabbos was before Yetzius Mitzrayim? What do you mean? We're not, we're not keeping Shabbos as a commemoration of Yetzius Mitzrayim. What's the right? Well, all these mitzvahs, so many mitzvahs are Zechel Etzius Mitzrayim, right? So what's the idea? So the Ravali explains like this, very beautiful. He said that, you know, when, when Klai Yisrael was taken out of Mitzrayim, all the tikkunim that, that can and ever will happen to the Jews happened then. All the, all the, everything, I don't, all, the, all the fixings, all the corrections, all the, this was the time that Klai Yisrael was forged as a nation. So in that was embedded all future Fixings, anything that could possibly ever happen in the future to Klai You hear what I'm saying? In other words, this was like the epic salvation of Klai So it, it was all in there, right? See, you hear, you hear that idea? So he explains like this, and he says, if you think about it, if you think about it, it's the exact same concept. Because again, what's Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur? We're, 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 you know, we go through a whole year. We build up all these averos. We build up all of these, you know, sins that we have. We come and we approach Hashem, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. We do our best. We daven. We do tshuva, right? Hashem, Hashem cleanses us of these averos, and then He brings us into the sukkah. He hugs us in the sukkah. He brings us into the sukkah, and and He protects us. He says, if you think about it, that template is exactly what happened in Mitzrayim, right? We were in the 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 Memtes Shari Tuma, right? In the the most tummy of tummy places that Klai Yisrael has ever been in the, the worst possible place, right? That's like, so to speak, you know, the metaphor for us going into Rosh Hashanah, right, full of Averas, full of... The, Hashem comes in and He pulls us out, He saves us from Mitzrayim, right? He saves us from the Mitzrayim with all of these makos and with all these epic things, right? Brings us up to a tremendous high madrega, and then what does He do? He envelops us in these Ananiya Kavos to protect us in the Midbar, right? To when, he, when He's bringing us into the Midbar, into this place of, of barren spirituality, of nothingness, He's protecting us, He's protecting this Madrega that we received at Yetzirah Mitzrayim by putting us in the Ananiya Kavos. So He says, if you think about it, right, you, got, you hear what I'm saying? It's the exact same, it's the exact same Tahalish, it's the same process as what's happening by Asra Shashan Yom Kippur. By, by Yetzirah Mitzrayim, it happened to Kali Yisrael as a nation, Right, and they were kept in the Ananiya Kavod, and by Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and Sukkot, it happens to each one of us individually. Right, that we go through this process of shedding our ra, shedding this bed, shedding our averos, getting this very high madrega close to Hashem, and then getting enveloped in the Ananiya Kavod, getting enveloped in the Sukkah, and being carried along, you know, to to take us through into the midbar, to take us through into into the rest of the year. Right, very beautiful. You, hear, you with me so far? So far? Okay, I just want to bring out one, one last one, hopefully just you know, quickly, to, to show how this goes even further back. It goes even further back because it's so interesting. You know, but the concept of sukkos right, is, is discussed in the Torah um, you know, much earlier. 
the concept of where, where is the concept of Sukkos discussed for the first time? Anybody know? By name, it says by the word Sukkos. It's not, I mean, it's not talking about the Yantif, you know, overtly, but you know, where, where, does anybody know what it is? By Yaakov, by Yaakov Avinu, by Yaakov Avinu, in the in Parshas Vayishlach, after uh, Yaakov and Esav um, have this, uh, you know, this 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 struggle, right? Yaakov and Esav, they meet together, the whole beginning of Parshas Vayishlach, right? you guys are learning to, told us, you're just learning the beginning of the, you know, how, how it all started now, you know, in Shanal, you know, but uh, this whole this whole epic struggle between Yaakov and Esav continues until Parshas Vayishlach, and then they have their meet, right? They, they they encounter each other, and, you know, Yaakov does all of his preparations, and he, you know, sends all the things, and then they make up, they make friends, and then they, uh, and then they part, then they part their, then they part their separate ways. And then what does it say after that? Vayoshev vayomer who Esav ladarkos heira Esav goes to Seir he leaves vayakov nasa sukosa and Yaakov goes to Sukos vayiven no bias vlimikneu asa Sukos al kain karashema makom Sukos right three times Sukos in this Sukim right he goes to Sukos he built their Sukos and they named the name of the place Sukos right so it's not a it's not a coincidence it's not a it's not the mikra it's not a you know listen to this, right? If you think about Yaakov, what, is, what was he just going through, right? What was Yaakov just going through? What was the process that brought Yaakov to his Sukkos, right? What brought him here, right? He got into a fight with Esau, right? And Parshas told us a couple of Parshas ago, right? He got into a fight with Esau, right? Esau's on his case. Esau's been hunting him for years, right? While Yaakov's hidden away over there with uh, Lavan doing his thing and having children and building the, you know, Shvatim and building a family and all of these things, right? And Esau, meanwhile, is looking for him, looking for him. Finally, it's time for Yaakov to leave, right? He leaves, and what happens? Now, Esau is on his case, right? Esau is encountering him. Esau is there. And what does Yaakov do? He faces off against Esau in two different ways, right? He gives Esau gifts, right? He sends Esau all of these gifts. He, he, he gives him, like, shokhan. He tries to bribe Esau, right? And he faces Esau's malach, and he fights, right? He fights against Esau's malach. And then he wins, right? And then he goes to Sukkot. So then when they say it like this, you know, this is exactly what happens also, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, right? Esau is like the Yetzirah, right? Esau is the, is the, 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 the Tzad Hara, the evil side, right? So Esau is after us a whole year. What happens? Comes Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, we do tshuva. What do we do on Yom Kippur? We give a seir la azazel, right? We, we give a seir, we give matanos, like Yaakov gave to Esau those matanos. We also, we give a seir, we give, you know what I'm talking about on Yom Kippur, right? There's two seirim, there's the whole, the whole of Hulda of Yom Kippur, the whole, all the carbonos of Yom Kippur, I can't go through the whole, the whole thing, but it, it, it all revolves around the idea that there are these two goats that are identical, and one goat is brought as a carbon in the, in the, you know, in the, in the base of Mikdash, and the blood is used in the avoda in the in the base mikdash, and the other one is sent to Azazel. It's like sent to the satan. It's pushed off a cliff, and and it carries their avodas away. That's what happened, right? And, uh, and what the swarm explained is that like those avodas bribe the satan, right? When the satan sees all those avodas, when the satan sees all of us confessing all of our avodas, doing this vidui, like we, right, and seeing all, so he feels good about himself. He sees all the avodas he gets us to do. He feels good about himself, and he lets us go, right? And where do we run to? Where do we go? to the sukkah, right? Like Yaakov Avinu, right? After he bribes Esau, he sends Esau on his way and he runs to sukkah. So he runs to the sukkah, you know, to protect himself and to set up shop and to, you know, to maintain the madrega that he achieved, you know, after struggling and beating and, and, and moving on from Esau. So, you know, we just see that, you know, there's like this paradigm, we see like this idea, there's this template that, that you know, that, that Kali Israel goes through, that the others went through, that we, each one of us individually goes through every every year. You know, we go through a year of trying our best, of working hard, you know, but but we rack up Averos, we rack up Esau, we, you know, he's on our back, we, we have the Tumma, we have, we're in Mitzrayim, we have, you know, we, we have, we, that's how we have, and every year we have the opportunity to approach, you know, to approach the Yom Narayim and get cleansed, right, to go through our own personal Yetzias Mitzrayim this time of the year, right, and, and like, like Yaakov Avinu, to, to confess our Averos, to give our Seir to Azazel, to get rid of, you know, to, to, to bribe Esau away from us, and then to, to go into our Sukkah, to go into our Anani Yaakovot, and, and to, you know, take the time to, to keep to keep the madriga that we that we reached and to contemplate and think. You know, how, how am I going to 
take this going forward? How am I going to, you know, you know, adjust this into my my life going forward? Like Rabbi Fick said last night, you know, I think it's even a little bit more than what he was mentioning. You know, if you think of the year starting from Nissan, I mentioned this name afterwards. I saw this once before. If you think of the year starting from Nissan, right? Like you know, the, we, we in the Torah, the Nissan is the first month of the year, right? So the all the Shalosh Revalim are from Nissan to Tishrei, right? Nissan is Pesach, Sivan is Shavuos, and then Tishrei is Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, and, and Sukkot. And then that's it, the whole six months of the year, there's nothing. Right? There's, there's Hanukkah and Purim. But there's no Yom and Tovim, there's no more, there's no Shalosh Regalim. All Shalosh Regalim are in one half of the year. And that, it ends right now, literally right now, right? T- tonight, and then, and then there's, and then there's Shemini Atzeret, and then that's it. You know, and it's true, yes, we have Hanukkah and we have Purim along the way, but you know, the Chagim are, are done now until, until Pesach, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's our job to take it with us. I see some to you know, to, to build ourselves up. You know, we, we've built ourselves, but to protect ourselves and, uh, you know, take, take the, you know, take the Ruach of it, take the Ruach of the Sukkah with us, you know, into the, into the next few months. And uh, again, just to see this template, see this paradigm, to see it's not just our own struggle, but it's a struggle that's part of, you know, uh, it's part of, you know, our, our Ruchnia's DNA. It's, you know, it's a template that repeats itself in, in, in many different patterns that, uh, you know, we're a part of every year also. Any questions, anything, any thoughts, questions?